one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, obviously we talk about sports because we, we did, you know, we do the sports, but we talk about life. Life, Even baby. when we was on our radio show doing, <laughs> we t- I think we talk more about and things the, outside of radio. That's why they took it away from <laughs> <laughs> uh, This is sports. <laughs> we'll talk about it. But I think part of, like, I think sometimes, like, life uh, parallels, sports, yeah. like you just mentioned, like you know you, your life lessons. You can learn so many life lessons from the game of sports. And and one of the things that I like about you is that and we talk about the running back situation. Sometimes you got to be, you know, you got to be able to adapt. Mm-hmm. You got to be, a, and you've been able to adapt in a lot of ways, man. So after your football career was over, you went into broadcasting, mm-hmm. great as a broadcaster, and now you are a writer on a <laughs> hit TV show. People don't realize Ephraim Salam is one of the head writers mm-hmm. over on Bel Air, which yeah. is on Peacock, which is going into his third season now. Yes. It um I I love it. I love being creative. And my mentor, Chris Collins, who got me into television writing, my first show was a show called uh, The Continental, based mm-hmm. on the hotels in the John Wick movies. Mm-hmm. Had nothing to do with sports or anything like that. But what he said to me was, you have a perspective on life that nobody in our writer's room will have. And you're always trying to find different voices, different people to, to fill these writer's room that have different life experiences. If everybody went to Harvard or Yale and, 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 and mastered or majored in, in, in writing or theater arts, then you would get the same experiences. You'll get some of the same pitches. Mm-hmm. And I, he said, you've been able to live life that nobody in any of these writers' room will ever have lived. So you can speak to certain things uh, through a lens that no one has has viewed. And I need that. Right. So once I understood that, then you start looking at whatever the project is. I've been to you know five six shows now. And you just try to add value. That's it's it. like being in a locker room, mm-hmm. right? You go to a team, you immediately have to add value or you will be going to another team or going to do something else. Right. So if you take that same mindset of being a collective, being a team with one goal, right? Win the Super Bowl, make the playoffs, win a game, and you take that into the real world, Right, you got a nice team here. Everybody wants to make a good show, so every, there's no ego involved. Right, whatever it takes, you go into a writer's room with that same energy, and you understand the material, and you have, you know, great pitches, and, and it, it it just it just lends itself to it being successful because it, I felt comfortable. It didn't feel like you know I could talk, I could tell yep. stories yep. all day. Mm-hmm. So just building out these characters, especially as a, you know, a, a beloved IP as, as Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and, and trying to recreate that. Uh, my man, my man, Morgan Cooper for Kansas City, shout out Kansas City, mm-hmm. uh, had the, the vision to, to redo that. And he did that, you know, sizzle reel and put it on the trailer and put it on, on, on YouTube and the rest was history. But we connected when I met him and we had some of the same visions of what we thought the show should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is back in 2020. So this is pre TV deal or anything. We really talked about this show and what we thought it could be. It meant so much to me in my youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it, it's been, it's been a, 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 a pleasure, man, and a blessing. I, I enjoy it. It's very cathartic. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.